blessed day welcome to via mystica and i thank you for taking interest in learning these secrets and please do like share and subscribe so that uh we could grow the channel and of course in reality uh so that i become a what we call this inspired to make more of this kind of podcast of this kind of of content because um because uh, it's so important for me that uh, there are people who support mystical studies, Catholic mystical studies, and are willing to learn about Catholic mystical studies. And soon, we will have a uh, YouTube membership, and I will lay out the, the, the things that are included in the YouTube membership. And uh, please do wait for a while, maybe next week after, uh, after I apply for the YouTube membership. So... Without further ado, let's start. Let's start the, 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 the lesson, huh? the, the lesson or the lecture or the podcast. But of course, let's start the podcast. Anyways, the first secret that you need to learn is always stay in the state of grace. Just go with the modern Catholic dictionary. Jo- uh, Father John Harden in modern Catholic dictionary provides a fundam- foundational layman's working. Definition the state of grace. It is condition of a person who is free from mortal sin and pleasing to God. It is a state of being in God's friendship and the necessary condition of the soul at death in order to attain heaven. Note, in this definition, a soul can only be pleasing to God when it, it has sanctifying grace. That supernatural quality which makes the soul resemble God, partake in his divinity, and bring the soul into close union with God. While the soul, according to uh, this Palm Saint Teresa of Avila, while the soul is in mortal sin, nothing can profit it. None of its good works merit an eternal reward, since they do not proceed from God as their first principle, and by Him alone is our virtue, real virtue. Remember, if you are in the state of mortal sin, you cannot grow. So spiritual growth, spiritual advancement or advancement in the spiritual life requires that we are in the state of grace. And then furthermore, God the Father said to St. Catherine, Your sins consist of nothing else than loving that which, is, that which I hate and hating that which I love. I love virtue and hate vice. He who loves vice and hates virtue offends me and is deprived of my grace. I tried... Because for uh, let's say two weeks, uh, I did not take, I did not confess, even though I fall into mortal sin, because I was praying for t- uh, true contrition. But as day comes by, I was in a spiritual decay. What do you mean spiritual decay? The more, the more I am in the state of mortal sin, the more I become far away to God. The more I, I step back away from God. So this is so important that at the moment that we, we, we fall into mortal sin, we go to confession, we find a priest, and we do not sleep in mortal sin. It's so important that we do that. In John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same beareth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing without me you can do nothing if you are in the state of mortal sin technically you are you are in the state of disgrace you are not a friends when you're not friends with god you are not in god's embrace you're not in god's grace but the father said to to say to uh, god the father said to catherine shena saint catherine shena i am that fire which purifies the soul and the closer the soul is to me the purer she becomes and the farther she is from me, the more does her purity leave her. Remember this. God is that fire that purifies a soul. When we are in the state of mortal sin, we are distancing ourselves to God. And by distancing ourselves to God, we do not live in, in, in the grace of God and we do not advance in the spiritual life. It's impossible. I tell you, it is so impossible to advance in the spiritual life in a state of mortal sin that's why the grace of god first is to convert the soul to bring back the soul in the state of grace 
That's why it's so impossible for non-Catholic Catholics, for those heretics, for those Protestants, for those outside the church to live a, a pure, a holy life. Of those, they could live a virtuous life, but they cannot live a holy life because holiness requires state of grace, and they cannot advance in spiritual life. They are deprived of that grace of advancing. Remember, by means of advancing the spiritual life, we are increasing our joy in heaven. The greater we are, the greater uh, merits, the greater reward in heaven. Remember that. That's how uh, how Saint Teresa of Avila uh, in, encourages the, uh, the the readers in the way of perfection. That they we must increase in perfection so that our joy in heaven uh, increases also. But the Father said to Ka Saint Catherine, "O oh, miserable vices that destroy the heaven of the soul." Heaven I call her the soul, because I made her to be so, living in her at first by grace, and hiding myself within her, and making of her a mansion through love. Now she separated herself from me, like an adulteress, loving herself and creatures more than me. She has made a god of herself, persecuting me with many different sins. She does not she does this because she does not consider the benefit of the blood that was shed with so great a, fu a fire of love. So remember the first, the first secret that we must do and we must be is always stay in the state of grace if you wish to advance in the spiritual life. Second, perseverance in prayer and penance. Yet the father said to Catherine, Saint Catherine of Siena, "No, dearest daughter, how by humble, continual, and faithful prayer the soul acquires with time and perseverance every virtue. So she sh she should persevere and never abandon prayer, either to the delusion of the devil or her own fragility. The devil often places himself upon the tongues of creatures, causing them to chat to." chapter nonsensically with the purpose of preventing the prayer of the soul so this is the word of god the father to saint catherine of shana the power of prayer never abandon prayer god the father said to catherine perfect prayer is not attained through many words but through affection of desire the soul raises herself up to me with knowledge of herself and of my mercy Seasoning one with the other, thus she will exercise through mental and vocal prayer, just as the contemplat active and contemplative life are one, so are they. One tip in prayer, in order for you to, to have that perseverance in prayer. Prayer life must be compatible with the state of life. You cannot pray like a monk if you are not a monk. You must pray like a husband. You must pray like a wife. Now, if you do not, under if you do not know this, uh, how to manage your prayer uh, I, I do offer catholic life coaching prayer life management to help you in your prayer life because i really need to know the uh, it, it is important that uh, as me as a catholic life coach in terms of prayer life management i need to know your daily schedule so that where can i so that we could insert vocal prayer and mental prayer so uh, this is my piece of advice uh, prayer, uh, because it's from the introduction of the devout life by Saint Francis de Sales, that prayer life must be compatible with state of life. Why? Because if you pray like a monk and you're not a monk, sooner or later you will tire yourself. And when you tire, when you tire yourself, you will abandon prayer because of your fragility and of course the work of the devil. So, in terms of prayer, it's a gradual progress. It's not. At the mo of course, uh, Saint John the Cross says in the interior uh, in the Ascent of Mount Carmel, those those who are sp spiritual beginners tend to love long prayers, long vocal prayers. But of course, if they persevere in that sooner or later, they will become tired, and when they become tired, they will not persevere anymore. So it's so important that your prayer life must be regulated according to your state of life. So prayer life management. Management. This uh, a sim. Uh, uh, just just remember this. Bad financial management leads to financial problems. Bad prayer life management leads to bad prayer life 
a uh, bad uh, bad prayer life management leads to prayer life problems so remember that uh if you are if you're still confused in in terms of prayer life management you could uh, avail my services it will be it will be helpful to because uh because i'm raising funds for my master's degree and with the help of the, uh, my master's degree i am i can teach more about Catholic mystical theology. Anyways, to continue, God the Father said to Saint Catherine, unless the soul keeps to his path of fervent prayer and self-denial, she will always remain tepid and imperfect. My will only love me and her neighbor in proportion to, to the pleasure which she finds in my service. So another, God the Father said to Saint Catherine of Siena, this is about penance. Penance should be simply a means of increasing virtue according to the needs of the individual and according to what the soul sees she can do in the measure of her own possibility. Otherwise, if the soul places her foundation on penance alone, she will contaminate her own perfection. Remember, as I, as I remember in Ashitical theology, Ashitism or Ashitism, Ashitical theology. So it's a theology on to, on, in terms of discipline. Like uh, it's an athlete. If you go with the with the etymology, it's an athletic athletic discipline. So in terms of that, if if you wish to to gain a virtue, you need to practice a certain virtue. If you wish to become charitable, you need to practice charity. If you wish to practice temperance, you need to be tem. You practice. If you wish to gain the virtue and increase the virtue of temperance, you need to practice acts of temperance if you wish to love then you need to practice or practice acts of love so but it's not at the moment of your conversion of course there's a fire within you that a zeal that brings you to 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 love god and love your neighbor so greatly that you do this you do that of course it's a grace of god but remember even saint Teresa of avila warns us that that an in a extreme zeal for the love of God can be a source of pride. That some because of our extreme zeal for the love for the love of God, that we uh, we hate not the sin but the sinner itself. Saint Teresa of Avila warns that. And anyways, so penance should be gradual. Of course, unless God inspires you to do so or unless your spiritual director approves you. But penance should be gradual. That's why the church gives direction in terms of penance. For example, every Friday, we, uh, the church uh, invites us because it's, it, it's uh, in the Philippines, we, are, we have options. Whether we eat meat or we do not eat meat. It's a 1987 canon law. I forgot. 19, 19, no, 1998. I forgot the, the, the date. But it's a new canon law that tells that we can substitute by substitute eating meat by doing corporal and spiritual works of mercy. But of course, the church invites us to practice abstinence from meat on every Friday. The church invites us to fast to, to do fast uh, to, to, oh, to, to do fast or fast and do abstinence in Holy Week or in the land. But uh, but more more to give. The church invites us to do penance, especially if you are in a certain religious community or religious spirituality. Like, you are invited to do penitential rosary, do pilgrimage, and so on and so forth. So, penance. And giving. Giving is an act of penance also. If you give to the poor, to the needy, to the, to the religious community, to those who are in need, and to so if you support uh, missions, and uh, that that's an act of penance also because you are giving sa uh, something that you work hard. So that helps develop virtue. So penance increases virtue. So we should practice penance. Uh, pr uh, we should have a pr uh, perseverance in prayer and penance. So Our Lady Blasilet says. Ah, my children, do your prayers well evening and morning, even if we're but a pater, pater noster, and Ave Maria. When you cannot do more, when you'll be able to do better, you must say more prayers. So this is when Our Lady uh, talked to the visionaries. 
Now, Our Lady gave the secret. Our Lady of Lazarus gave the secret. Woe to the inhabitant of the earth. God will exhaust his anger, and no one will be able to escape from so many ills together. The chiefs, the conductors of the people of God have neglected prayer and penance. I'm going to repeat. The people of God have neglected prayer and penance, and the devil has darkened their intelligence. They have become these wandering stars, and the old devil will drag with its tail to have them perish. So this is the words from Our Lady of Lazarus. I know you're excited for the last last secret, the third secret. <laughs> it's like the third secret of Fatima. I'm, joke. I'm just joking. But anyways, uh, please do like, share, and subscribe. And this is the third secret of the mystics in terms of spiritual growth. It is -na -na -na, humility. God the Father said to St. Catherine Shena, No virtue, daughter, can have life in itself except to charity and humility which is the foster mother and nurse of charity. On, the occasion, on another occasion, Margaret was conversing with Jesus on the second Sunday of Advent. She asked him, My Lord, what shall I do in order to live the, to the end in you? Because of the special intimacy I have enjoyed with you, I have become too familiar and now do not respect your greatness with a proper fear. I do not keep in my in mind my own loneliness. Jesus answered her, "My child, keep up your mind. Your prayer, your prayers was pleasing. Your prayer was pleasing to me when you prayed that you might be subject to all creatures. So I command you from now on to subject yourself not only to me but to all creatures in so far as it will to, will be to my glory. For love of me, hold yourself contemptible." contemptible in the sight of all mankind, imitating my example, for I made myself subject to all men, and willed that they should hold me in contempt. This humble lowering of yourself will exalt you among the blessed who are in heaven. Be white in your innocence and ruddy in your love, because you are the third light granted to the order of my beloved Francis. He is the first light, shining in the orders of the Friars Menor, the blessed girl is the second light, shining in the order of the nuns, and you are the third light in the order of the penitents. Wow. Humility exalted Saint Margaret of Cortuna. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. James chapter 4 verse 10. Remember, in terms of spiritual advancement, we alone in ourselves, we cannot advance. That's why in humility, we ask God to help us in advance, in, in, in towards advancing in our spiritual life. In humility, God exalts us. And through humility, we please God with, with so much greatness. Remember St. Teresa Child Jesus? That, uh, I know St. Teresa of Avila, uh, the quote, I forgot the quote. It was like, uh, do small things with great love and God will be pleased. Something like that. Because, of course, in reality, we do not owe God. And God... Oh, wait. Sorry, 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 sorry. That's heresy. No, 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 no. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, my gosh. Uh, God doesn't owe anything to us. We owe everything to God. Oh, my gosh. Lord, have mercy. I'm so sorry. That was wrong. That was wrong. That was wrong. The right thing... The, that was the, what I said, that God doesn't... Uh, wait. We owe nothing to God. Oh, that was so wrong. That's not... Sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. But anyways, uh, God doesn't owe anything to us. We owe everything to God. So through humility, through humility, we uh, we let God, we we like a children, or like we, we, we like a child in the arms of a mother, and we let the mother take care of us. And of course, like a poor and wretched sinner we are, we take, uh, we let ourselves be taken care of God. So remember these three secrets that I have shared to you: always in the state, always stay in the state of grace. Second, perseverance in prayer and penance. Third, humility. Remember, we uh, we owe everything to God. God doesn't owe anything to us because we are created 
to the love of God. We're created to the love of God. And thank you for watching. And please do pardon me sometimes in terms of of in my lang in my speaking English. I'm doing my best to to improve uh, because English is my is not my first language, and it's so hard to to have to speak fluently in English. But uh, we will get there. We will get there in terms of we will get there in. In, in uh to have a fluent uh, to, we will get there uh have a, yeah we will get there <laughs> maybe sooner or later I, I mean sooner or later maybe let's say three four four months i will be great in english but of course it's a it takes a lot of practice and i will practice for that <laughs> because uh, good thing i re I, I realized that i was wrong <laughs> i was wrong but anyways i corrected it okay we owe everything to god and God doesn't owe uh, anything from us. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah, just just understand what I'm saying. We owe everything to God. Anyway, thank you for watching. And please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. And, and I hope that you learn something a lot from this podcast. And uh, I'm so grateful that... You are still listening right now, and you are, you did you didn't get you didn't get bored at all. And anyways, thank you and bye bye. God bless.